Hi everybody, Rochelle here from Quebec Cyclé Day. Today I am going to debunk five cyclic myths that are driving me crazy. So stay tuned! Before we get started, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I post a new video with fishy content on every Thursday, so make sure not to miss a single one. And if you're new to the channel, there is a lot of binge-worthy content. Go check out my other videos. All right, so back to the subject, the five myths that annoy me like crazy about the African cichlids. I understand how this fish can seem intimidating. They're so beautiful, they're the most colorful freshwater fish. They have complex behavior, they can get so big, but you don't need a bachelor's degree in fish keeping to keep this fish. Just minimal research will do. The water parameters for this fish are very different from the normal freshwater fish, but they are a long way from being as complex as a saltwater aquarium. To learn and understand more about these water parameters, I will link in the video description a bunch of other videos that I made that will help you out with the subject. As with all fish, even the normal freshwater fish, some go together and others don't. And it's the same with African cichlids. And I, I'm talking about this here because this is the one that drives me the most crazy. So many times I see people come in and ask me questions about what's going on with their aquarium and I see a Venistus, a Demazani, and a Frontosa all together in a 30 gallon tank. I understand the pet shop is willing to sell you these fish together and they won't ask you questions about the tank size. They probably won't be able to answer a lot of questions about these specific fish either. But it's also your responsibility to do your research on this subject. Nobody's going to forbid you from buying a fish. In the end, it's your aquarium and your pets that you will be keeping. So instead of taking for granted the word of somebody you don't know who probably knows just as much as you, do your research. Of course, I'm not just going to leave you with this being said and let you go do your research. Come on! Here are a couple of general rules of thumb that can help you select your fish. Keep peacocks, oronocara, and haps together in a big enough tank. Embunas cannot go with other Lake Malawi cichlids. Certain exceptions apply. Embunas can be mixed with Lake Tanganyika herbivores such as Trophius. Some haps and Lake Tanganyika carnivores are compatible, others not, especially the tiny, tiny shell dwellers with the giant haps and predators, obviously. Do not mix together Lake Tanganyika carnivores or Lake Tanganyika herbivores. They just don't mix well. Lake Victoria cichlids are versatile and will go with most Lake Malawi and most Lake Tanganyika cichlids, but make sure to only keep one species of Lake Victoria cichlids per tank. As if this information isn't enough to help you out, I have a ton of videos about this, obviously. I will link them in the video description for later. You're gonna have a lot of video watching to do after this. I hope you have a lot of free time. Well, as for this one, the answer is, well, yes and no. All Lake Malawi and Lake Victoria cichlids are mouth brooders. This means that they will incubate their little babies in their mouth for about a month. This being said, these fish don't thrive in an aquarium where there aren't enough fish. If you buy a couple of fish, put them in a tank, expect them to breed, forget about it. It is not going to work. Chances are that the male will have killed the female before long, and if you see them kissing, they're not kissing, they're fighting. That's how they fight, they don't have fists or feet to kick. As for Lake Tanganyika cichlids, some are mouth brooders and some are not. Those that aren't mouth brooders can be kept as a couple in an aquarium. Of course, research their minimum tank requirements first. I mean, none of them will fit in a five gallon tank. So this myth was 95% a myth. This myth makes me sad. I have others that made me mad. This one makes me sad because it really steers people away from African cichlids. Yes, they're aggressive. Yes, their behavior is more complex. But if you buy fish by taking into consideration their compatibility, and if you buy them by respecting their minimum tank requirements, you will be able to build a 
harmonious aquarium. I will link in the video description a video I made a couple weeks ago on how to deal with African cichlid aggressivity in your aquarium. This is the most destructive myth. When you're constricting a fish to a tank that is too small for it, you are condemning this fish to a short and miserable life. Yeah, their outer body stops growing, but their inner body continues. Eventually, their organs will crush each other. And well, this obviously affects negatively the fish's health. On top of being deformed from this horrible thing that's happening to them, your fish will suffer greatly. Obviously, this goes with what I was saying before. I know it sucks. Sometimes the fish store, the pet store, they will sell you uh, fish that are that grow too big for your aquarium. They will not make you aware of this. I, I, I know it's I know it may seem unfair, but also do your research before adding your fish in. So let's say you didn't and now you're stuck with fish that are too small for your tank. What can you do? You can either give them to your local fish store, resell them to some local hobbyists who probably have a big enough tank for them, or the better option is you can use this as leverage into convincing your spouse that you need a bigger aquarium. It's up to you. Before though, make sure you give your fish cute little nicknames. That way your spouse will grow attached and they won't want to get rid of them. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Are there any other cichlid myths that you would add to the list that I just made? I only did five. It's there's still a lot more. Write them down in the video description. I love reading them and we can vent about how these things annoy us so much. If you like this video, there is plenty more where that came from. Subscribe to the channel because I post a new video on every Thursday. If you want more fishy content in between my weekly videos, well, make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter, and I have a great website where you can shop online and see all the fish I have for sale. I ship throughout Canada. If you like this fabulous Cichlid Geek t-shirt that I am wearing, it's available in my Teespring store. The t-shirts ship worldwide and every sale encourages me to continue doing what I'm doing, making videos, getting fish, building my store. Thank you to everyone who encourages me. You guys are the best. So thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.